I'm reading a passage out of Ender's Game, page 6. This is the very first chapter. He's being confronted by these bullies, right? And they're pushing him. They're not letting him go through. And they're, uh, okay, so here we go. Oh, you're going to fight me, huh? Going to fight me, 30? The people behind Ender grabbed at him to hold him. Ender did not feel like laughing, but he laughed. You mean it takes this many of you to fight one third? Right, so he's mocking him, right? Ender is. We're people, not thirds, turd face. This is Stilson. Fuck Stilson. Stilson's a fucking bully and he's a piece of shit and he's got other people. So three on one, right? We're people, not thirds, turd face. You're about as strong as a fart. But they let him go. And as soon as they did, Ender kicked out high and hard, catching Stilson square in the breastbone. And then Stilson dropped. It took Ender by surprise. He hadn't thought to put Stilson on the ground with just one kick. It didn't occur to him that Stilson didn't take a fight like this seriously. Uh, that he wasn't prepared for a truly desperate blow. For a moment, the others backed away, and Stilson lay motionless. They were all wondering if he was dead. Ender, however, was trying to figure out a way to forestall vengeance to keep him from taking him in a pack tomorrow. I have to win this now, and for all time, or I'll fight it every day, and it will get worse and worse. Ender knew the unspoken rules of manly warfare, even though he was only six. It was forbidden to strike an opponent who lay helpless on the ground. Only an animal would do something like that. So Ender walked to Stilson's supine body and kicked him again viciously in the ribs. Stilson groaned and rolled away from him. Ender walked around and kicked him again in the crotch. Stilson could not make a sound. He only doubled up and tears streamed out his eyes. And Ender looked at the others coldly. You might be having some idea of ganging up on me. You could probably beat me up pretty bad. But just remember what I do to people who try to hurt me. From then on you will... You'd be wondering when I'd get you and how bad it would be. He kicked Stilson in the face. Blood from his nose spattered the ground nearby. It wouldn't be this bad, Ender said. It would be worse. He turned and walked away. Nobody followed him. He turned a quarter around the corridor, leaned to the bus stop. He could hear the boys behind him saying, Geez, look at him. He's wasted. Ender leaned his head against the wall of the corridor and cried until the bus came. I'm just like Peter. Take my monitor away, and I'm just like Peter. So that's um, it's just amazing. It's just absolutely incredible. The uh, the whole the military council is actually watching all this happen. They're not or no, actually the monitor was taken off, and so that way, um, Stilson knew that he could fuck with him uh, and beat him up because the monitor was sort of like you know like a camera or whatever. Or I'm not sure how how it was, but it was like a. I don't know, something that was on his head, a, a camera that was on his head that w he could be monitored from the commanders, but at the very same time it was non-intrusive, so you couldn't hear him talk or say anything. Um, so, I think this is a good life lesson. The, eventually the commander comes in and they ask him actually if he had beat the shit out of Stilson because he's just a vengeful, you know, just a mean person. Um, if he's just a bad, you know, just a, just a, a bad, Billy badass. And, um... And he didn't do it because he's vicious. He actually did it because of a strategic tactic. He saw three on one. What's he going to do with three on one? He has to take out the leader and he has to beat up the leader so bad that he can get away from everybody else. So it really it was a survival mechanism and he didn't have to beat up everybody because once he beat the first one up bad and he says, see what I did to him, that'll happen to you, then he was able to get past and um, and it's also against bullyingism, like somebody that says, do as I say or else I'll hurt you. I can't stand that type of shit. So self-defense is intelligence. This makes sense. Um, it, but because Ender thought the situation through and could only scare the bullies who outnumbered him, but he was over the top to the bully. So this says to stand up for yourself, and it also shows how ruthless bullies can be and how violent aggression um, is clearly wrong. So, you know... The, this, even though uh, Orson Scott Card might be in favor of the Vietnam War, we were the aggressors in the Vietnam War. We would have been the stilts in, in Vietnam, and they would have a right to fight against us for self-defense. And actually, four million Vietnamese died in their war for independence against American occupation and the French occupation, and everybody else wanted to occupy Vietnam for a long-ass time. So we actually took over for the French troops, and the French have been fucking Africa over for a long-ass time. Even Jacques Chirac said something about if they understood the banking system. Basically, the way France gets their money is the rape of Africa. And there is a lot of people, they use French currency, and they use, um, you know, they don't have their own currency, whereas Gaddafi wanted his own currency, so we're still kind of doing the same shit. Um, you know, cl cleaning up France's mess. So Orson Scott Card in 1985 
Also, he wrote about how political blogging and how the internet writers would influence the world. Peter and Valentine, while Ender's fighting the buggers, it's writing about... Uh, 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 Peter and Valentine are writing about how the world will be organized after the war. So when there's an alien invasion, all of humanity is together. And they step up to unite and to save our species. But afterwards, it's going to be back to Machiavellian politics. So sort of like... Um, the war against Hitler, right? Everybody thought it was a good war. We stood up against this evil, fucking aggressive, you know, uh, Nazi imperialist. We stood up against fascism. We were the good guys, and the whole world all did that. But then immediately afterwards, we had a cold war with uh, the Soviet Union. And um, and so the world was kind of being pieced up. And actually, America controlled 50% of the world right after that had happened. So... Peter and Valentine would get into anonymous online debates with each other under assumed identities, right? So they're using blogs and they're using the online apparatus in order to spread their ideas. Now, if you're interested in how to take over the world via blogs, according to Peter and Valentine, a.k.a. Locke and Demosthenes, 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 I think it's Demosthenes, Demosthenes, Give a pretty good lesson. Step one, take time to learn how to write, but do under different names so your earlier mistakes aren't attributed to you. And step two, fake a bunch of attention. The fact that Peter is a jackal, the chapter 13, uh, 18th paragraph, and Val is Karen, makes their switcheroo of online identities sort of ironic. They surprise us all when Peter takes on the role of John Locke, who is known as the moderate conciliator, and then Valentine writes as the Demosthenes, the rabid nationalist. At first, a quick bit of history. The names Peter chooses for his online identities is of historical importance. They're, they pick them because of the historical pers uh, importance. The quick version of John Locke, uh, 1632 to 1704, not the guy from Lost, but the guy he's named after, was an English philosopher interested in rational political organization. John Locke also believed in the right to life, liberty, and property, which is where Thomas Jefferson got the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness ideal that he wrote in the Declaration of Independence. By contrast, Demosthenes, who was born uh, 385 to 322 B.C., was an Athenian politician most notable for really strongly opposing Macedonia, which is to say Alexander Great. Alexander the Great and his family. So De Demosthenes was against Alexander the Great, which is interesting. So he's against the empire, right? The empire that Alexander the Great was constructing. In Ender's Game, John Locke is the guy who thinks we can all talk out our political differences, while De Demosthenes is the one who calls for war between all the countries. Demosthenes is the father of classical rhetoric and oratory, even though he was had a stuttering problem and he was a country orphan. Uh, Demosthenes watched theaters. He would be yelling with rocks in his mouth as he ran cross country. He wins his father's inheritance because he was a good oratory and then would become the first lawyer. Demosthenes was not funny. He never spoke extemporaneously on the spot. He always had prepared all of his stuff. In real history, Demosthenes is a big enemy of Alexander the Great, even though she, uh, Valentine ends up working with Peter. Valentine is never comfortable with this role and then ultimately ends getting herself and Ender away from Peter's power. I think Peter kind of takes over the world after all this has happened. So through the mock arguments online, they were able to influence the national consciousness of the world. They are able to influence the debate that the world was having. And these are just kids online just you know, uh, having this mock debate that people were getting into. So... I like that. I like how he was foreshadowing the importance of internet. The you have topics.com. Um, you have uh, blogs you can write on Facebook. Facebook is very much social media. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, and other. You know, you can start your own website and sort of put your own rantings up. Um, topics is actually the perfect example of it because you can write any name that you want to and then say whatever you want. Um, I try to actually put my own name up and be like, well, people will take me more serious if they know who I am. And by putting my own name up, my God, these they, everybody on Topics is just a bunch of anonymous fucking dickholes. I've never met anybody else that puts their own name up um, and actually has something to say. Sometimes somebody will pop up every once in a while and be like, hey, stop talking about me, you know. Um, and they use their own name, and actually that's good. It's a good start because, in general, everybody else sucks. Um, but it's... Um, 
I don't know. I I I I just I wish I would have had another person like Valentine or Peter to kind of have mock debates with. So then other people didn't along with me. But instead, I got just blasted by so many fucking different people, and it was just um, it wasn't even fair. This sh- they would just make up shit and call me fucking names and say that I done shit that I didn't do, and um, and and not because I did any of this stuff, but because they disagreed with my political uh, stances they they just you know use ad hominem uh, attacks and it's just it's bullying and it's bullshit but i think it actually confuses dumb motherfuckers i think a dumb motherfucker read one and another and think oh well that's equal he's he's conversating with them and he's conversating with them it's equal no it's not fucking equal i'm staking my name and reputation on my post whereas this fucking asshole's like Oh, I'm a fucking prick, and I can allege any stupid shit, and um, that's uh, it. Kind of goes to the uh, um, LBJ tactic of uh, you uh, make the allegation, and then you make the other person deny it, and then in the public's mind, they have to decide: well, is it true? Is it not true? Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? And um, LBJ, he was losing politics by like 20%, and he said that the other candidate was having sex with his, the farm animals in front of his family while they was all crying and telling him to stop, and it was ridiculous, and it was bullshit, and everybody knew about it, and they said, well, why would you say something like that? And he was like, it doesn't matter if it's true or not, just make him deny it. So then when you deny it, then people say, well, did he fuck the farm animals? Was he having sex with the farm animals? And... Um, and so there's like plausible doubt whether or not that works. So that's sort of how ad hominem politics works. Um, yeah, there's another guy that talks about like when you ask somebody, do you beat your wife? And then you have to say yes or no to that. And then when you ask yes or no to that, then it's like, well, did you believe me? Do you beat your wife? No, I do not. I do not beat my wife. I've never beat that there woman, Miss Lewinsky. Uh, I think you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're a liar. Because... When you dignify a question with a response, and it's like, well, maybe there's something to it. Do I believe him? I don't know. I didn't like how he said the thing. So, that's a political tactic. It's LBJ, fucking vicious fucking tactic, and it's bullshit. But, I like the idea of how he had kind of pointed out that people can use the internet in order to sort of uh, steer the debate. So, but, the main reason that I like Ender's Game, the all, my, this used to be like one of my main my favorite books, excuse me, the my favorite books of all time because this is going to sound a little egotistical, but it feels like I feel like I'm Ender, right? And I feel like I'm the chosen one who's going to save all of humanity, okay? <laughs> I'm Neo, right? I'm Neo. I'm using the online blogging. I'm using all the um, different tactics that I have out here in order to make myself known, get my political views out there, and, and hopefully that'll do something good for me later, right? And so... Um, uh, so, yeah, I feel like Ender. I'm not the chosen one. I'm very much human and I'm fallible. But I, f- I feel I want to save the world. I want to make the world a better place. And I'm not for sure. I see a lot of other liberals and other people, but I feel like they're just a bunch of... Uh, God, some of these people just feel like they're fucking dicks who just want to argue with you, but they don't actually want to uh, work with you and consolidate with you and sort of work for a better humanity. They want the fucking power and they get nervous about anybody who disagrees with them, so they just got to blast them. When really it's all about the conversation and sort of... Com- to you know different um, conclusions about things something about like a, a, a sort of consensus based democracy so we can sort of work our problems out so I remember I told a black professor who was talking about how teachers always lowered uh, expectations for black students that I wanted to eradicate poverty and she laughed and she's like oh, good luck with that but she didn't realize that she's lowering my expectations so while she's oppressing the class of 30 intellectual slaves she didn't realize that she's the oppressor she's sitting there talking about how bad black people have had it but she's the massa she's oppressing everybody else and she lowered my expectation and who's going to end the poverty if I don't do it who's going to do it is she going to do it is anybody in that class going to do it nobody's going to do it but basically she was the oppressor and since they laughed at my fucking idea about wanting to eradicate poverty I guess that's just a stupid idea right and a lot of times people do <coughs> worship their master like that so she ain't going to do it corporate America has never done it the Christian church Catholic church they haven't ended poverty it's all over the place Malcolm X debate club Occupy Louisville, Louisville liberals none of them have done it okay so I got a true blue revolution on my back and it's a cross I don't mind bearing because I know that it's right and true we got homeless folks all over the place 10,000 homeless children in Louisville and I want to see real genuine structural change Democrats Carl from Occupy Louisville social movements class these folks pretend they want change but they don't they only want power for themselves and I can 
see myself getting the gauntlet, but only to relinquish it once progressive, consistent based democratic systems have been set up with instant runoff voting. I've got a 10 point plan that comes from Huey Newton, social movements class. I said something about how America voted for Bush twice. Privileged white women made a joke about, oh, I didn't vote for Bush, and then everybody laughed out loud, which insinuated that I was a Republican. I'm more liberal, more revolutionary than everybody in that class and than anybody that I've actually met. Uh, unlike them, I actually want change. I hate war, prisons, violence, child abuse, any type of abuse, spouse, elder, police brutality, police state, war, empire, prisons, Patriot Act, NSA, spying, lying, hypocrisy, superstition, ignorance, and tyranny. And unlike those I have ran into, I will actually see change. I will change the world. Substantial, structural, permanent, institutional change by any means necessary.